I've been following uh, Croatian tourism uh, for more or less 20 years now. And I would say uh, of all the places I've been to, the two destinations that have really, really impressed me in terms of progress they've made and uh, keeping that authentic uh, and a higher quality of tourism have been Korchula Town and Starigrad on Hvar. And Starigrad I know particularly well because I lived in uh, Yelsa close by for 13 years. It used to be the capital of, uh, of Hvar. Uh, it was called Pharos. That's when the, the ancient Greeks came from the island of Paros 2,406 years ago and established a colony. And they brought within their olives and uh, their, their vines and that's uh, and that's how the wine growing uh, and olive producing tradition started on, on the island. Over the years I've seen an increase in quality in Starigrad and here are 10 things about Starigrad which I think are pretty amazing. So the first one is um, Hvar is an island which has the most UNESCO heritage of any island in the world. So you have one uh, world heritage site, uh, the Starigrad Plain, which is a large, um, very fertile field just outside of Starigrad, which was uh, cultivated by the ancient Greeks. And it was separated into different parcels of 90 meters by 20, I think. Everything is pretty much done today as it was back then. And so this is one of the 11 UNESCO World Heritage Sites that Croatia has. It also has five uh, UNESCO intangible heritages. And if you come on one particular moment in the year, you can actually experience all six UNESCO heritages at the same time, which I think is probably unique in the world. But that time is Monday, Thursday, just three days before Easter. And so in the scenario to experience all six, you would have a dinner in the Starigrad Plain in this um, UNESCO World Heritage Site. The food you'd be eating would be uh, from the Mediterranean diet. The Mediterranean diet from Brach and from Khwar is inscribed as UNESCO in Intangible Heritage. You would have tablecloths made of Benedictine lace. The nuns in the monastery in Khwar town, uh, their uh, lace is uh, inscribed as UNESCO Intangible Heritage. You would have live music from a traditional uh, a cappella clapper group. This is the tr traditional male singing from Dalmatia, but also now you have female clapper uh, as well. And this is also inscribed as UNESCO in Intangible Heritage. Around you would have the amazing dry stone walls. This is a very, very um, intricate art of, uh, of, of wall building that, that happened in Dalmatia. And that's also recently been added to the UNESCO list. And um, sometime after 10 o'clock on Monday, Thursday, you would have the annual Zakrijan uh, behind the cross uh, procession, which takes place between six villages, uh, Starigrad, Vrboska, Yelsa, Pitva, Svirce and Vrsnik. And there are these six processions that take place at the same time. And this is also UNESCO heritage and it's gone back 500 years. So you can have this amazing place where you have all six things happening in the same time, which is pretty cool. The second thing that's uh, pretty amazing about, about Starigrad is despite the fact that nothing has changed in the Starigrad plain, this UNESCO site for, for almost 2,400 years, there is actually an airport right in the middle of it. It's a bit of an, an airstrip. It's not an official, official airport. It does operate. The maximum number of passengers a plane can have to bring it in is um, six. So it's for light aircraft only and helicopters. We actually operated a helicopter service in 2013. We had a Swiss helicopter based in, in Starigrad. A nice accessibility for luxury tourism, but also Starigrad is the, uh, the main center for the main ferry. So you're only two hours from split. You have a minimum of three ferries during the, the winter and a lot more during the summer. So uh, it's very, very accessible. And the third thing I think is really cool about, uh, about, uh, about um, Starigrad is uh, a journey that happened back in 2004, which uh, I thought was fantastic. The ancient Greeks came from the island of Paros and they named the capital Starigrad Pharos. There were some enthusiasts, including the legendary winemaker Andrew, Andrew Tomic, uh, and they decided that what they would do is they would have a reverse journey from Pharos to Paros. And so they got a traditional wooden boat. They filled it with uh, also with vines and with, with olive trees from, from the island. And they made this journey back from Hvaros, from Starigrad, all the way back to where the civilization on Hvar uh, began there. And they came to the island of Paros, and now there's a good connection between the two islands, which I thought was a really nice story. And there's some great video footage on YouTube for that if you want to find it. Number four, um, you know, Khmer is known as a celebrity island. This is somewhere where celebrities can come and they're, and they're not really uh, bothered at all, unless you're Prince Harry and you fall into a swimming pool uh, in, in a nightclub, as he did in 2011, and was all over the all over the media for that. But you have Tom Cruise was, was walking around having a coffee, nobody touched him. But actually, although all the celebrities go to Khmer Town these days, the original celebrities came to Starigrad, and so in 1964, Jackie Onassis, the the former uh, wife of um, of uh, President Kennedy 
is actually water skiing in Starigrad, and she came and Tito sent a patrol boat to, to make sure everything was okay for her. But even before that, in 1938, King Edward VIII, who had abdicated from the throne in the UK, he came on his honeymoon to uh, the Croatian coast. He was the first person to go skinny dipping in uh, on the island of Rab. He started the whole tradition of FKK, of naturist tourism in, in Croatia, it said. And he came for lunch in uh, Starigrad. He came to the, the wonderful restaurant of Jurin Podrum, which is still one of the best restaurants uh, on the island. It's also a, um, a town which has incredible culture. Um, wherever you go, there's something going on. They have this wonderful, wonderful male singing choir called the Faris uh, Cantatori, uh, and uh, they have these incredible concerts. And if you ever get the chance to go and see them, they're, they're really, really amazing. It's also the film set for one of the most popular series ever in, in, in former Yugoslavia called Mala Misto, which was a sort of satirical look at Dalmatian life, and it was incredibly popular. And today, if you come, you can go and see an exhibition of the, uh, of the Mala Misto. So it was a beautiful take on Dalmatian life, I mean, even though I don't speak Croatian fluently or Dalmatian, even it's really special to watch. It's also a place that has uh, its own theatre and open-air cinema, and the Piccolo Theatre encourages local talent. They put on some great stuff, and that's open 12 months a year, so you can get theatre 12 months a year in Starigrad. And the most famous building, of course, is the uh, Hektorovic Palace, the Tvojil, which was built in the 16th century. And uh, you know, Hektorovic was, a, was, a, was an incredible person, and there's this fantastic fish pond. There's uh, inscriptions in Latin uh, all over the wall. It's, uh, it's, it's a magical place to be. So Starigrad is deceptively cultural. There's, uh, wherever you go, it's, uh, it's uh, there's something to see and to experience uh, 12 months a year. And it's, it's one of the oldest cities in, in uh, Croatia, uh, dating back 2,406 years. But, and it's a place that has so much heritage and so much history and so many secrets still not told. And so one of the problems with people who buy property in the old town is that when they start to renovate and start to put in things like try and put sewage and things like that, they dig a little bit deeper and then they find some historic thing under their house. And so then all, this, all the works have to stop and then the, the, the uh, archaeological uh, guys come in. And recently they just found this massive mosaic under one of the streets. And so you, you walk along there and you just see all this amazing Roman heritage underneath the streets. And now they have an exhibition called The Cities Under the City. And so you can see all the different things that, are, that have happened in Starigrad over the years. And it's uh, in, in terms of history, it's probably one of the most important places in Croatia, I would say. The seventh thing that I find really amazing about Starigrad is that uh, the Island of Hoa has, um, for better or for worse, uh, over the years, got this reputation as being a bit of a party island. There were a lot of bachelor parties and we had Ultra Europe and we had uh, the Yacht Week and so on, mostly in Hoa town. And Starigrad is about 20 minutes drive away, but it's a completely different vibe and it's a completely completely different pace of life and they have a very, very different approach to tourism as well. And it's one that I really support uh, because if you walk around a lot of destinations in, in, in Croatia, you'll find a lot of uh, cheap uh, souvenir shops. Whereas if you walk around the old streets of Starigrad and a bit also like Korchula, you'll find a lot of uh, local artists and uh, authentic souvenirs and stuff sold. It has, it has that sort of more complete authentic destination feel, I think. The, the way they're, they're moving their tourism in Starigrad is really, really interesting. And uh, they were recognized last year at the Days of Croatian Tourism of uh, being one of the top three sustainable destinations in uh, in Croatia. They don't want party tourists. Uh, they don't, they've actually banned any more hostels being built or opened in, in Starigrad. And so they're going, trying to get up to get a, a better class of tourists. They've invested a lot in their in their waterfront. So now it's become a really, really important sailing uh, destination. And uh, we've had um, Maslin Resort is the second five-star hotel on the island. And then Valamar took over so the, uh, the hotels. They're turning to four-star hotels. And so the whole, uh, um, essence of Starigrad is being lifted up as a quality destination and they're looking to attract um, culture, families, sports, nature and gastronomy. And so uh, in, in comparison to many, many other destinations, I, I see it as being a very, very well managed and very well controlled and uh, they have a very, very excellent offer and it feels a little bit different to a lot of the mass tourism that you find elsewhere on the coast. A lot of destinations have their own specialty and uh, one of the things that um, Dorigod offers is this delightful thing called uh, Paplenya, Dorogorovsky Paplenyok it's called. A wonderful biscuit uh, which has uh, a lot of ingredients uh, including honey and so on. And it's been made with a traditional recipe for over 800 years and it used to be made for the sailors, uh, the, the wives would make it for them when they're out on their voyage uh, like fishing and so on. It's wonderfully tasty but it's also beautifully decorated and there are various different people and it's a great souvenir. Um, and that's one specific thing for, for Starigrad. But 
But uh, the food and the wine are a big story in Starigrad, and uh, as I said before, the Mediterranean diet is uh, part of the UNESCO heritage. Starigrad takes its food very, very seriously. I would say in terms of uh, the island, and probably in Dalmatia, it's one of the most diverse in terms of types of uh, restaurants and uh, people doing really, really good authentic food. And for 12 month living, it's the, pla the place to come with has more restaurants open, I think, than the rest of the island, actually. One thing, and one thing I really like about Starigrad is their, their approach to, uh, to tourism in terms of activities. This is um, a place which uh, is very, very big on sailing. They have a very, very deep bay. It's uh, eight kilometers uh, from, the, uh, from the channel coming in. So it's a very, very safe, protected harbor. And they've really expanded that marina in recent years. And they have one of the nicest events, I think. It's called Daniel Valley. It's uh, the days of the bay. It's in September and they have all these traditional sailboats come in. They have a lot of gastronomic festivals, they have workshops, they have concerts, they have food and wine. They have this beautiful dancing of the sails where you have this sort of light show and the music and uh, and all these boats. It's uh, it's a magical, magical experience. But then you also have the Paiski uh, Regatta. Um, and so th there's a, a lot going on with the sailing, as well as mountain biking. Um, they have the Dalmatian Winter League, uh, which is uh, for mountain biking. And they also have a really nice event called uh, Cycling Through uh, Heritage, which is a, a cycling race through the Starigrad Plain, through the UNESCO World Heritage Site. All around Starigrad is, is very, very beautiful. And there are places to go. You can cycle all the way through the UNESCO site. It's very, very safe and it's uh, it's flat and it's it's really interesting. But this is a destination which is uh, which is really working on the natural resource resources it has and it's not looking to sell cheap gimmicks or to get parties in. It's uh, it's a really really sort of chill place to be. And the final thing I would say about Starigrad is it's uh, by far and away in my opinion the best place for 12 month living for expat living on the island. Uh, it has the most facilities. Uh, I've mentioned before about the ferry being close, but also you have um, more restaurants are open. You've got the theatre, you've got the, uh, the the cinema. You have more and more foreigners and remote workers, digital nomads are coming there and they're, they're, they're appreciating that uh, pace of life and that lifestyle. And there's a lot of local humor and uh, camaraderie. It's the only place outside of Zagreb that has a ministry. It's called the Ministry of Other People's Affairs. This is a restaurant called Kod Damira, where uh, people love to gossip and so on. And so they've actually got a plaque out there. But uh, it's a place that um, is very, very welcoming. Uh, it's very safe. Everything in the pedestrian zone is, uh, is, obviously, is obviously walkable. And uh, I know more and more foreigners now who are are choosing Starigrad, are loving it for 12 month living and it's close to get to split to get to the airport to leave. It's 20 minutes from our town, it's uh, 10 minutes from Yelsa. There's a nice community uh, of, of expats there, but there's also a very nice uh, mix between the locals and the, and, uh, and the internationals there. And it really is probably one of the best lifestyle places, I would say, certainly on the islands of Croatia. Come visit Starigrad. <laughs>